Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Zach Hampson and in today we're going to watch me put together the first of one of many potential, potentially many, uh, of my larger on plane air works uh, centered around the figure in the landscape. And so this is the first of those works and uh, I've got my beautiful fiance Avalon sitting for me. And this uh, plein air side of things is roughly about an hour. And then the studio time, which is roughly about four and a half hours, spread over about two or three days. Um, so I just wanted to kind of pop in here because I really enjoy watching videos where you can see the artist's head as they talk, uh, talk you through the process. So I just wanted to do that and uh, I really enjoy it. So hopefully you guys enjoy this too. But just wanted to really walk you through some of the things that I'm thinking about. Not necessarily, oh, I picked up this color and I did that to this color. But, you know, there's other, there's billions of videos of like that. But I just kind of want to walk you through sort of what I'm thinking about, really, w what's going through my head while I'm painting these sorts of things. So, because it is on plein air, um, I don't, uh, the, and there's a time limit to it, right? So, I've only got like an hour thereabouts to sit with Av. Obviously, we could do multiple sessions, right? Or I could just do the one session, uh, paint as much as I possibly can, and then just take it back into the studio with a lot of good reference photos, try and match the colors, match the values in Lightroom with, on those photos and uh, go from there, which is what I end up doing, uh, which is a lot easier to do than to do multiple sessions with Av. And obviously, you know, she doesn't want to sit there forever. <laughs> um, but I just really try and f put all my energy, uh, obviously not into the background because if I really want to, I can go back out there at the same time of day and paint that background or I can just paint it back in the studio, whichever, whichever. But I just want to put all my energy into Av because she's the model. I have her there in front of me. And so I'm just putting all my energy into just, you know, painting how I normally would in the studio, finding those darker values, then looking for those mid-tones and then looking for those lighter values and uh going all the way up to the like, sort of semi highlight sort of sort of thing um while i'm painting and uh obviously uh i say this every sort of plein air but just because it's a plein air and just because we've got a limited time the sun's moving across you feel the crunches on doesn't mean we can skimp out on the drawing right put time into the drawing otherwise your painting is going to probably suck right <laughs> you know and so you saw in the beginning there i was actually putting a lot of time drawing out some of the uh, compositions i had in mind so the initial composition i had in mind didn't really work second one didn't really work third one it was kind of getting closer fourth and fifth one was more so what i wanted and so doing these drawings are always 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 beneficial to both you and the and the painting at large uh just to get it get it get it good from the get-go pretty much um and we want it good from the get-go and so uh, i found that composition that i wanted in the in the sketch sketch up sort of phase and then uh in 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 my sort of uh notepad if you say and uh what i did was just take that drawing from there and just transition it over to the uh canvas uh over here on the side so even though all my energies put into painting up Avalon uh, on 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 this scene right uh, when I'm sort of sort of guessing about like mm, I'm not too sure what I want to hit next I'll sort of dip into the background a little bit and grab some of those values grab some of those colors so I've got that for later um, it's, it's really important if you're going to do uh, it uh, outside inside um, and you're just a little bit iffy about your values changing your colors changing uh, grab sections of each, right? Grab sections of each colors, sections of each value, and sort of just put them down on the canvas in sort of areas and stuff, right? Uh, close enough, right? So that it's like a it's like a mental note to yourself, to your future self about uh, what those values were doing, what those colors were doing in that light on that day, and so it's just a really helpful sort of thing that you can do for yourself. So I recommend doing that if you're painting on plein air and uh, you know you're gonna not be able to complete it all on uh, one session. So yeah, so it's a yeah beneficial thing to do. So this is a series that I've kind of had in mind for a long, long time, 
and that is to sort of paint the figures in the landscape. I think ever since I got that Soroya Masterworks book that you would have seen in my uh, favorite painting books um, video, a couple of videos back, um, ever since I've got that, just in my head, I've wanted to paint the figure in a landscape. You can see that we've finished up on the plein air section here. Uh, all done. This is as much as I got done in this uh, one hour session. Uh, it's on stretch canvas, by the way. Um, uh, I can give you the uh, dimensions at the end there because uh, I can't remember the right now. <laughs> but, you know, that's as much as I got done on plein air. And there's my little beautiful daughter held by her nana there. She was just watching us paint away. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is something I've been wanting to really do for a long while is, uh, paint the figure in the landscape ever since I saw the, got the uh, book, Soroya Masterworks book, right? Uh, just been so inspired, been dreaming about it, been thinking about it, been writing about it. Sometimes I talk about it, um, uh, but this is kind of, I've been, I've been building up my plein air sort of, you know, sort of technique, right? <laughs> sort of technique, right? Um, in in so that I can do these on plain air, right? Because I'm going much bigger than this. I'm going a lot bigger than this. I'm going multiple people, right? Not just uh, one figure in a landscape. Um, and so that's the whole lead up to this, sort of um, those those paintings that you'll see. You know, I'll make videos like this about them as well. And, uh, you know, I might even make them in the moment. Like I'll talk to you while I'm, while I'm doing it sort of thing. Not just like talk to you past tense about this painting sort of thing i only did it because I, I wasn't too sure what i was going to say and it felt a lot a little bit easier and a little bit more uh less sort of pressure on my sort of mental uh sort of where i'm at mentally while i focus on this piece so that i'm not sort of divided between talking and painting so you know, it's a lot easier on myself to just sort of paint in the moment and work out and uh, problem solve in the moment than it is to sort of problem solve, tell you what I'm problem solving, why I'm problem solving, than it is to sort of talk to it about right now. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so a lot of uh, the things I captured on plein air session was just the overall composition, those initial values, those colors, and uh the, the overall feel of the piece, what I wanted to, you know, con convey to the viewer. And uh, a lot of the process going forward in the studio time, like I said, the studio time is about four and a half hours, maybe five hours, maybe, I think, I'm pretty sure it's four hours uh, of just painting in the studio, refining some things. Um, I've talked about this in my live streams. Uh, if you saw the live stream I posted up just a couple of days ago here on YouTube, uh, I talked about the Zin Lim, he's an artist, Zin Lim, uh, where he talks about this zoning construct in, in compositions where you zone piece. So say if I was painting a portrait, right? I'm painting Av's portrait here, right? And I'm painting it. The zone that I want to put most emphasis on, the point of interest would be like zone one, right? And then there'll be another zone outside of that. You can make it as far away from the first zone or as close as you want, right? And in, in these zones, as they stretch out to outside the canvas size, is where where we start to get less and less refined with it, with our painting, less and less uh, rendered out, less and less um, sort of, uh, you know, uh, realistic, if you say. And that's kind of like where we sort of pull back and, and everything outside of that initial first zone is where uh, things are going to uh, come together. I'm working the background. I'm keeping the background nice and loose because talking back on on that on that uh, concept of zoning things, right? Uh, the background's kind of there to just sort of help prop up the center of interest. And so I'm just sort of doing the background up enough where it's strong enough to prop up and help the uh, main point of interest, but not strong enough to take away interest from the main point of interest right so i only build it up to the point where it's strong enough to sort of stand on its own two feet and help out the rest of the painting but other than that i sort of just leave it as is and you know um a fun, a fun thing about the background actually is I, I sort of um i use this sort of interesting technique where sergeant does this a lot of painters do this is that 
if you want to change the colors, the feel of the colors, the warmth and stuff like that in certain areas, all you really have to do is start popping in different colors, right? So if I want to warm up a section, I might start popping in some, some reds in there in the background or I might start popping in some blues in some sections of the background there as well um, to sort of give that overall sense of warmth in that. So so that that's helpful that's uh that's a fun thing and I, and I found it really really beneficial uh when i was painting up this big piece and it really made a big difference especially when the way that i paint i, I paint in a way of which is very that russian sort of sense of painting where they're like if it doesn't matter seven feet back then it doesn't matter at all <laughs> sort of way of thinking right so what that's saying is that when we're painting this piece right and we're standing seven feet back from it or three meters back from it right we look at what's important what's making a difference in the piece and we focus on that anything else that's not making a difference at three meters back it doesn't matter it doesn't matter and so yeah i i, I kind of carry that with grain of salt you know obviously things do matter people get closer blah 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 blah, blah. but what it's saying is overall if a piece is working three meters back then it's working. If it's not, then you got some issues, right? So I keep that in mind, right? I, that's what I keep in mind, at least um, when I'm when I'm painting up the piece. So pretty much my whole canvas is covered right now, and from this point, from where everything's pretty much covered, everything's in the shape and the way that I want it to be, uh, I start taking things into refinement, right? This is where I start to really like pull things into refinement, pull things into the shapes that I want them to be and uh, clean up shapes into smaller shapes, into smaller shapes, et cetera, et cetera, right? And, uh, and uh, this is where I start to add the patterns, right, on her dress. Uh, fun was, Actually, this is a good thing to talk about, actually, is that when, when you get, when you're really blessed to have a model in, it, it sit for you, right, uh, a really great thing to think about is wardrobe, right we often don't really think about this as painters we're like oh beautiful woman sit down yep great but what she's wearing it can can make a lot of fun to paint and be a lot of fun to look at as well right is is that um really think about the way what she's wearing how that sort of talks to the viewer how that talks to to you as an artist because you're the one painting it you're the one making it so it's got to be you know interesting for you to paint right <laughs> Uh, and, um, so really, you know, put some energy into, to what they're wearing, what they're, th what they're doing. Like I wanted Av to be wearing a hat, you know, I wanted her to be wearing a dress. Um, and I wanted her to wear a dress that had some sort of patterning on it. Right. And this dress that she wore has actually got a really interesting pattern. Whereas one section's one pattern, another section's another pattern. And they sort of bounce off these the, the same sort of color scheme patterns, right? But different patterns overall. Really interesting, really interesting. And I had a lot of fun painting it too. I put in Av's uh, tattoos here. It's probably one of my favorite things to paint on Av because uh, she has lots of really beautiful tattoos and they look really, really great on her. And so I'm keeping my brushwork really nice and loose. I'm working with a bigger brush. Uh, easiest way to keep your brushwork loose is work with a bigger brush, right? <laughs> uh, smaller brushes, more brush strokes, more refinement. Bigger brush strokes, less brush strokes, more looseness. Uh, is a good way to think about it. So if you want something to be loose, work with a bigger brush. And so I work bigger brush here and I start dotting in the general shapes of her tattoos. Because it's outside of that, that initial first zone of interest, it's less refined. And so I kind of keep it a lot looser than what the initial zone of interest would be, what, uh, that refinement sort of zone. Um, it's just coming into, when I was touching up her face there for a little bit, everything on the face is just just getting more refined, more rendered out, thinking about getting those shapes in properly, and thinking about those different sort of colors and values. Uh, that's kind of the biggest thing that I was thinking about when painting up her face was was those was those colors and those values in her face because she is in the shade here and she does have a little bit of dappled light uh, hitting over the top. It does kind of make the colors and values kind of flatter, right? Um, 
uh, painting on plein air, you don't see that too much, right? You, you can see, I see a lot more, but when you have a photo, a photo kind of flattens things out. So it's good. It's something you got to remember, especially if you're working from plein air to inside is remembering how it looked on the day, right? There's a lot more depth. Uh, I see a lot more depth. Things uh, have a lot more depth, a lot more richness in color. Uh, we see a lot more stops of light than cameras can uh, at this present time of recording this. <laughs> I don't know when you guys are watching this, but at right now as recording this, uh, I see way more than cameras ever can uh, or can right now. And so you got to be mindful of that when you're working from a reference photo back in the studio. It's like, okay, it looks a little bit flatter here, but on the day, it wasn't that flat. So, yeah, just something to keep in mind. But um, just rendering out the form there on the face, and uh, this is pretty much as rendered out as I want to take the face, right? And so that's pretty much the whole process. Uh, I think I just didn't film the hands and some other little touch-ups around the hands, like the tattoos and the patterns of the dress and stuff like that, taking those through a refinement a little bit more, uh, simply because uh, they were like the last thing I was doing and my memory card was pretty much full and I didn't want to wait, offload that onto the computer, uh, so waste time doing that. So I just, you know, finished that up off camera. Uh, it wasn't too much more time. I think it was only about maybe another 40 minutes of painting, if that. Uh, or 30 minutes of painting, if that. Um, so yeah, I really had a lot of fun with this piece. Uh, I've got really great feedback from this piece. People really responded really, really well to this piece. Uh, so that's always, always positive, always positive. I really appreciate that. Of course, positivity is always well appreci appreciated. But, is, you know, if people don't like it, they can tell me that too. <laughs> but uh, I would love to read your comments. Uh, leave a comment down below. I'll love to read that, respond to you. Uh, you know, have you attempted to paint figures on plein air? I'd love to hear uh, your experiences about that as well. Uh, if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe, hit that bell, hit that like, uh, you know, and then on top of that, you can join the mailing list, email list uh, over on my website. The sign up section gives you 24 hour early access to the videos here on YouTube. And we become best buddies for life doing that as well. So if, you, if that sounds like a good deal for you, you can go over to my website and sign up for that as well. <laughs> um, other than that, guys, I hope you all enjoyed the video and uh, I hope you enjoyed everything about it because there's a lot more of this sort of thing coming and I can't wait to share this incredible series this vision i have in my head with you guys and so yeah i'll see you all in the next video catch you guys